In this video, I am going to discuss uh, the pseudocode and the time complexity analysis of a merge sort. So, in the previous video, we discussed the example, uh, two examples we discussed in the previous video and ch uh, checked how the merge sort works uh, to sort an array. So, here let us discuss the pseudocode. Uh, following that, we will discuss uh, the time complexity analysis along with its reference relation as well as we will discuss the scenario as well each and every uh, case scenario also will be discussed in this video. So, if you see the pseudocode uh, for merge sort algorithm, yes, if you like any unsorted array would be given. If you check an unsorted or like any array, if you take definitely there would be the low pointer which would be pointing the very first index and the high pointer which would be pointing the last index, right. So, algorithm merge sort low and high would be there. So, now like you have to check like if, if there are more than one element in an array, we are supposed to divide it into two equal subarrays, right. So, the condition here is if low is lesser than high, which means only if low is lesser than high, when the low would be lesser than high, when there are more than one elements in, the array, in an array, the low would be lesser than high, right. So, when there are more than one element in an array, we are supposed to divide the array, right, into two equal subarray. So, to divide the array, we are supposed to identify the midpoint. To identify the mid element, the formula is low plus high divided by 2. So, after identifying the midpoint, for example, like this is the given array, we, we, for instance, we will take this. So, if you check the midpoint, you know, after identifying the midpoint, imagine that this is going to be the midpoint, the 6 is going to be the midpoint. So, till mid, it is going to be the one list, right. So, once identified the midpoint, you are supposed to call the merge sort algorithm again and if you check like you would be getting the two list right. From low till mid would be considered as one list and then again mid plus one till high would be considered as an another list. So, this indicates the left sub array and the next function like recursive call indicates the right sub array. So, left sub array limit would be right from low pointer till the mid pointer and the left sub array is low pointer is going to be the mid plus 1 and it would end with the high pointer. So, like after identifying the mid point again it would call this is the recursive called the merge sort function. This merge sort function would be called again and it would check again in the sub array. This is going these are the sub arrays right uh, 5 and 6 in one sub array then again 3 and 2 another sub array right. So, first the left uh, merge sort low till mid would be called the first recursive function would be called again it would check whether low is lesser than high and this is going to be low and in the place of mid the, the, the high like in the place of high the mid index would be passed when this function is called right. So, this is going to be our high now right again you check whether low is lesser than high yes low is lesser than high which means there are more more than one element in an array. So, again identify the midpoint and divide it. So, now 5 and 6 would be there. After dividing it again for this the recursive call would be called again. So, both low and high is going to be the same. So, which means what when both low, low and high is same means there is only one element in array it would stop dividing it and again it would call the next recursive call to solve the right sub array. So, this is how like the division part works here if there are more than one element if the low is lesser than high it would keep identifying the midpoint. Once the midpoint is identified the list would get subdivided into two. So, the left sub array limit is going to be right from the low index till the mid index mid element index and the right sub array is going to be right from the mid plus 1 index till the high index. So, this portion indicates divide part because it, it follows driven and concave approach right. So, to divide this portion of an algorithm would be used. So, once the division is over. So, finally, there is only one element in an array just move on to the merge step. Once division part is over, the next step is going to be the merge step, the conquer step, right. So, if you look at the merge step, for example, you just imagine that like uh, um, okay, 5 and 9. So, the division part is over, all the divided uh, arrays are there here. So, after conquering these two, like uh, so, we are having 5, 9, 1 and 10, we are having it, right. So, now if you check this is a merge part. So, when it comes to merge like both low, mid as well as high would be there, right. So, this high indicates the low pointer, j indicates mid plus 1 and i indicates again the low. This is for new array. This index is for new array. This h is for the left, left sub array starting point, left sub array starting index. This j indicates uh, right sub array starting index. 
for example there are two sub arrays right so this is going to be our h our h pointer would be pointing the first index of the left sub array j pointer would be pointing the first index of the uh, right sub array right now okay, and this i is going to be this i for the new array array name is i and that i would be pointing the first index of a new array so this is what they are, they uh, they have meant here in this line and in the next line there is a condition we are going to use the loop in the condition it has been mentioned that whether the h is lesser than equal to mid as well as j is lesser than or equal to i which means h must be lesser than or equal to mid only because the end point for the left sub array is mid and the end point for the right sub array is going to be high right so now if h is lesser than or equal to mid if there is only one element so here if you check h is equal to mid only because both h and mid is same here if you check j and high is same right so if h is less than or equal to mid or j is less than or equal to high you are supposed to start comparing array of h and array of j so whichever is lesser must be written in the i array new array so like i pointer would be pointing the new array so you are supposed to copy down over there in the new array so in the place of b of i we are supposed to copy whichever is lesser if array of h is lesser you are going to write array of h into the new array suppose if array of j is lesser go to the else part so in the place in the new array in the in the in the, in the place of b of i the array of j would be written so whichever is lesser would be written into the new array which is called b and the pointer is going to be i right so now okay fine we just compared it and i just wrote it like phi and j is uh, compared so since uh, j is lesser i have written 1 inside and then again phi is going to be lesser and 9 and 10 this has been written right we just keep compared it and we are written into new array once written suppose if you are writing h you are supposed to increment the h pointer if you are writing j you are supposed to increment your j pointer and also once written you are supposed to increment your i pointer also so that in the next step the new value can be copied into the new array right so i think uh, these steps are clear and this step is for for example we'll take these two arrays okay so uh, okay we want to merge these two create one new array the b array and i pointer would be pointing the very first index and this is my i and this is my j right so here what we do like we'll be we would be comparing every time right array of h and array of j so whichever is lesser would be written into the new array since array of j is lesser i am writing j inside and increment your j j can't be incremented because in the j array like the j side uh, the elements are over now if you look at the other side like yes there are few elements which are not even considered so we are supposed to consider right how we do like without changing in order we would be directly copying it into the new array right so how are you going to, how are we going to copy it down these are the statements given clearly so now you check if h is greater than mid when the h would go greater than mid when the h portion the array is completely over it would go greater than mid right which means when the h array is completely over what are we supposed to do means they are using one more loop here inside and which is called the k loop the k loop would start from the current j right from the j till high there is only one element so both j and high is going to be same only so j suppose there are few more elements are also there now like right from the current j till high which whatever the elements are there that would be copied into the new array b of i equals to array of k so we are using a loop here so one by one till the high position we are supposed to copy down into the new array this is when when the left sub array is completely over in the left sub array is over it would be copying all the remaining elements which are there in the right sub array into the new array else part is going to be when the right sub array is completely over it would start from h for example if you look at this example we wrote j inside the new array if you check which means the right sub array is completely over but in the left sub array few elements are remaining still remaining right so when the right sub array is completely over use the k loop the loop start from the current h so right from the h till mid because for the left sub array the end the ending index is going to be mid right right from h till mid it would copy the element one by one into the new array first 19 it would copy and then 42 it would copy that's why we are using the loop 
till we reach the mid we are supposed to copy the same into the new array so this is how it works so the first portion is for dividing an array until there is only one element in the list we are supposed to keep on dividing this sub array once there is only one element in the list it would stop dividing the list and the next step is merge part so to for merging it we are supposed to use two pointer h and j h is to indicate the left sub array starting index and j pointer is to indicate the uh, right sub array starting index we are supposed to compare array of h and j whichever is lesser must be copied into the new array and also we have here once copied we are supposed to increment the so and so pointer also so we have to keep doing it at certain point after certain point like one sub array would get completely over in the in the another sub array like few elements might be remaining in that scenario we are supposed to use these statements here like if the left sub array is completely over with the help of the loop copy down the remaining elements in the other array into the new array if the right is completely over whichever the elements are remaining the left survey should be copy left sub array should be copied into the new array so so this is how it would be copying so finally like copying down the final sorted array into the new array right from the low till high is what this is so this is how the merge sort algorithm works so now let's discuss the time complexity analysis so if you look at the time complexity like uh, uh, I, I think you all would have guessed that the time complexity is going to be we go of log n obviously the worst case is going to be let me explain how now so the time complexity is big o of n log n sorry big o of n log n and again the best case is also going to be omega of n log n and average case is going to be theta of n log n. Let us discuss the scenario also um, and before that I just want to discuss the recurrence relation why because here in this pseudocode if you look at it you know we have used the recursive calls which means the recursive procedure is included in the merge sort pseudocode. So directly like it is not possible to you know trace out the pseudocode and identify the complexity identify how many number of iterations each and every statement is going to take why because it, there is a recursive procedure involved so it is it is it is not easy to compute all that so also we have to go with the recurrence relation especially when the recurrence function is involved in it so if you check the recurrence relation this is what the recurrence relation for it is going to be for the merge sort uh, t of n equals to 2 t n by 2 plus big o of n so like uh, to analyze the time complexity of merge sort we can establish a recurrence relation which represents the time complexity of solving a problem of size n so here the t of n indicates the time taken by the merge sort to sort an array of size n so t of n is nothing but time taken to time taken only to sort an array time taken by the merge sort algorithm to sort an array of size n because since n is given here this is going to be the size and the next step is like in the next if you look at the right hand side there, there are 2 t n by 2 as well as big O of n is there let me tell you what is this 2 t n by 2. So this n by 2 is going to be the sub problem size. So every time when you divide it we are getting the sub problem size of n by 2. So if you check if you look at the pseudocode so this is our initial problem right so this is our problem uh, yeah this is our problem with the size n so this problem was divided into two equal sub problem right so which means what if the problem size is n we are getting the sub problem with the size of n by 2 and then again if you look at it this is one separate sub problem and the right sub problem is again is going to be the separate sub problem so now again this is the left sub problem with the size n again when you divide it we are getting the n by 2 sizes right and again if you check the right sub problem again if you divide the right sub problem we are getting again two different sub problem with the size of n by 2. So every time when you want to divide a problem of size n you are getting the sub problem size of n by 2 which means we are we are dividing to two equal sub problem so we are getting the size of n by 2 here. So every time we are the sub problem size is going to be n by 2 and this 2 indicates the number of sub problem not only the number of sub problem why because if, if you check the binary search even in binary search also every time we are getting the two sub we are getting two sub problem but if you check the time comp uh, the recurrence relation it is going to be only t n by 2 plus 1 
why we haven't included the coefficient 2 means we are getting 2 sub problem only but we are not including the coefficient 2 here why because we are ignoring one sub problem completely we are concentrating on one sub problem only for solving it so we are not solving both the sub problem over there in the binary search so the coefficient was only one which means we are solving only one sub problem another sub problem we are completely ignoring it so the coefficient is 1 but if you check here the coefficient is 2 which means every time we are getting two sub problem both the sub problems you are solving so the, co the coefficient is going to be 2 and this n the big O of n indicates it represents the time taken to merge the sorted sub arrays of size n during the merge step so this is for what for the cost of merging the sorted subarrays so this is what the recurrence relation to solve the recurrence relation there are different techniques are actually methods are actually there one is recurrence tree method the master's theorem method like that but master's theorem is the easiest way to solve the recurrence relation to derive the time complexity so when you apply the master's theorem you would be getting the time complexity big uh, theta of n log n so this is going to be our final time complexity so that's why like the worst case both the so here in the merge sort if you check or both the best worst and average are going to be big o of n log n so now like now i explain i i guess i i, I it's clear the explanation is very clear like how we reached n log n now i'll tell you the scenario when exactly we'll we'll get the best case the worst case as well as the average case so this best case occurs when the input array is already sorted so if the input array is sorry this is for the best case when it comes to worst case when the input array is in reverse order so this would occur the worst case scenario would occur when the input array is in reverse order you want to sort it in ascending order but the input array given is in the descending order in this scenario it would be taking n log n so it would be taking n number of comparisons when it comes to the merging so like every time you will be just comparing it all the numbers will be compared and uh, like you will be writing into the new array so this is going to be the worst case scenario when it comes to the best case scenario and also when it comes to like in the during the worst case scenario you know, for the merge sorts when the input array is in reverse order so in this case the algorithm would still divide the array into two equal subarrays recursively but during the merge step it needs to compare as i told you before it needs to compare and rearrange every element in both the subarrays so you have to rearrange every element in the new sub in into the new array so that's why we call it as a worst case scenario and the complexity is going to be big o of n log n when it comes to the best case scenario when the input array is already sorted if input array is already sorted again the complexity is going to be still n log n only it occurs like because in this case the algorithm still divides the array into two equal halves recursively but during the merge step it simply just concatenates the sorted subarrays without any comparisons because they are already in the sorted order right so this is going to be the best case scenario when it comes to average case scenario it assumes that the random distribution of elements in an input array it uh, because uh, it's, it's randomly shuffled or it has a random distribution of the elements so this scenario we call it as the average case scenario random distribution of elements in the input array so this is how the pseudocode works the pseudocode of Mozart algorithm and the time complexity also discussed and the recurrence rec relation also has been uh, discussed hope it was helpful thank you